Jack Dorsey is out from Twitter. That's right, the most incompetent CEO on the planet has officially resigned from his leadership position at the tech giant. In this video, we're going to take a look at the resignation. We're going to see how investors have been pressuring him to leave for some time now. And stick with me all the way to the very end of this video when we walk down memory lane and revisit some of Dorsey's most pathetic decisions Yet, you are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Patriots all across the world. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you, as always. We are here to start off the countdown to Christmas right with our super awesome Cyber Monday special here at Turley Talks. We are a small business and rely heavily on support from people like you who buy our books, our t-shirts, our event tickets, and more. It's because of these purchases that I'm able to be full-time here devoted to our movement. Well, today on Cyber Monday, I invite you to support our movement. Please click that link in the description below to purchase incredible bundles with discounted books, event tickets, incredible merch, including our awesome and witty t-shirts, which are all now buy two, get one free, and much, much more. It's not only supporting me, but it's the perfect Christmas present for all the patriots in your life. As always, thank you so much for your support. It's because of purchases like this that I can do what I do. So click on that link in the description below to take part in Turley Talk's Cyber Monday sale with incredible deals. So don't wait. It all ends tonight at midnight. Click on that link below and let's make this the most patriotic Christmas ever. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Jack Dorsey. The CEO of Twitter, who many, of course, have mistaken for a homeless man, has just announced that he is officially stepping down. Dorsey, who co-founded Twitter back in 2006, announced his departure through Twitter, of course, and will be replaced by a fellow by the name of Parag Agrawa, who is T uh, Twitter's current chief technology officer. CNBC is reporting that since the announcement, shares for Twitter actually went up by 3%, which is a fitting reversal of the misfortunes that have belabored the company over the past year. Twitter's shares have fallen 10% over the year, even though the S&P has risen nearly 25%. So Dorsey, needless to say, has been a rather controversial CEO, and not just as far as investors are concerned. The Times noted that his leadership has been questioned by employees who believe that he was completely unfocused and spent way too much time on the payment platform Square, where he's also the CEO, and he's been too distracted by other projects. Now, if you don't know... Dorsey actually survived a previous attempt to get rid of him when the hedge fund Elliott Management secured a 9% stake in the company and they subsequently initiated a mutiny against him. They tried to oust Dorsey. He survived, obviously, but whatever it was this time around, it seems to have gotten him. He's now out of the Twitterverse, as it were, and my, it could not have come soon enough. Now, we, of course, don't know what's going to replace Dorsey's leadership over there at Twitter. Matt Walsh, Candace Owens, others think that censorship is only going to get worse on Twitter. We're going to have to see on that one. That certainly seems to be the trend among big tech oligarchs. But at least for now, we can celebrate the departure of one of those oligarchs. And that, of course, is the fall, the colossal fall of Jack Dorsey. Dorsey, of course, is most infamous for permanently banning President Trump from Twitter, even though the United States Senate exonerated Trump of any wrongdoing that Dorsey accused him of regarding January 6th. Twitter users certainly let Dorsey know what they thought of that move. Twitter lost billions, with their stock falling by as much as 12% after announcing the ridiculously partisan decision to ban Trump. Business Insider reported that the share price decline wiped out an astonishing $5 billion from Twitter's market capitalization. And it wasn't just investors that were furious with Dorsey. Governments across the world united in their absolute condemnation of Twitter's suspension of President Trump's account, with world leaders calling Twitter's actions an egregious example of outright censorship, which not only suspended President Trump, but it also by implication overruled the free choice of Trump's 80 plus million followers. Critics of Dorsey's ridiculous decision range from German Chancellor Angela Merkel to France's President Emmanuel Macron. Even the president of Mexico was incensed over the ban. And so under Dorsey's so-called leadership, nation after nation throughout the world, 
began to ban Twitter in some shape or form. So, for example, the government of Uganda had announced banning Twitter just before their election a few months back. And if you could believe it, in protest to that blocking, Twitter public policy actually had the audacity, I kid you not, they had the audacity to whine about the banning, claiming that it violated human rights and the principles of an open internet. I mean, again, this isn't the Babylon Bee. The very leadership that banned President Trump permanently from their platform, keep in mind, after he was exonerated by the United States Senate, those same people had the gall to claim that they were champions for an internet free from banning and censorship. It literally defies the imagination. Jack Dorsey's Twitter staff actually condemned another nation for doing exactly what Jack Dorsey did. In India, there's been a massive backlash against Trump's Twitter ban. We have to remember that Trump was very, very close with Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, who heads the Hindu nationalist BJP or Bharatiya Janata Party. And so India has been cracking down on Twitter ever since. They actually coined a new term for Twitter and big tech in general. They're, they're calling big tech digital colonialism. How's that for a perfect phrase? The Modi government is pushing back against digital colonialism, the power of big tech to enforce Silicon Valley political correctness on populations all over the world, irrespective of and often in defiance of their laws and their national sovereignty. And so the Modi government has issued guidelines in its code of digital media ethics that Twitter has to abide by or else it will be banned. In addition, the conservative nation of Poland has introduced a bill that proposes heavy fines against big tech, but particularly Twitter, which is aimed at enabling internet users to file complaints against the removal of their online posts, as well as the creation of a special court for matters involving freedom of speech online. We could go on and on. Dorsey has done far more harm than good with Twitter, and it's about time he got ousted. Again, all of these nations regulating and banning Twitter is in response to the absurd antics of this left-wing outlet. You, of course, remember when Jason Whitlock, a sports journalist who's himself black, tweeted out about the controversial purchases that a BLM founder made, right? She bought millions of dollars of real estate purchases. So he tweeted out, Black Lives Matter founder buys $1.4 million home in Topanga, which is a black population, 1.4%. She's with her people. And he added a link to the story on the celebrity property blog, The Dirt. Twitter deleted his post and locked his account for, quote, violating our rules against posting private information. Now, forget the fact that this BLM founder is a public figure. Forget that. Forget all, you know, all you need to do is look up this, this trending story on Google. Forget, I mean, a number of reputable news. Right? Forget all of these. Forget it. Forget that this actually sparked uh, calls for an ind independent investigation to our finances. No, if we don't like your story, if it makes our far left advocates look hypocritical, then we're going to block the story. And of course, who could forget what Twitter did with the whole Hunter Biden laptop saga? In fact, Twitter ended up locking the Trump campaign's account as well as his press secretary, Kaylee McEnany's account, for just sharing the New York Post story about Hunter's laptop. Dorsey ended up having to admit that Twitter's censoring stories and locking accounts with little to no public explanation was completely and totally unacceptable. But of course, he did absolutely nothing to fix it. So all of this is to say that Jack Dorsey will not be missed. Whatever he ends up doing post-Twitter will, I'm sure, be littered with as much incompetent controversy as that which marked his tenure at Twitter. Whatever happens from this point forward, Dorsey's name is mud in the hearts and minds of hundreds of millions of patriots all across the globe. And we can only hope that he is planning a long and unrelenting retirement. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my video on the colossal fall of another leftist icon, and that is Oprah Winfrey. You are not going to want to miss this, so make sure to click on the link. And I'll see you over there. God bless.